Hi everyone, welcome back. In the previous videos we talked about how the transactions get routed by the system agent targeting either memory or the IO subsystem. We also saw that the transactions targeting the IO subsystem can be of two types config transactions and MMIO transactions. Right? The config transactions target the config space of the PCI devices in the system. BIOS uses the config space to discover the topology and assign bus numbers as we saw in the previous videos. Right? Today let's focus on the MMIO space. Right? Before that, yeah, quick recap. At a high level, what does MMIO mean? It stands for Memory Mapped I.O. It basically says that even though the transaction from the processor contains the system address, the transaction is actually mapped to the I.O. subsystem. Say for example, there is a load instruction that the processor executes, right? It's going to read from memory. So let's say we uh, have an instruction, say, um, move ebx, right? Come on, some address, say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is the memory address. And we are going to read from that address. So it's going to be move EAX basically read from the address pointed to by EBX into EAX. Okay. So when the processor executes this instruction, it doesn't know whether this address is pointed to memory or whether it's pointed to IO. It doesn't know and it doesn't care. Right? When this transaction goes out of the processor core to the system agent, which the BIOS programs, right, that will determine whether it should be sent to the I/O subsystem or sent to the memory subsystem. Right? Again, you can look at session five for more details on this. So, why would a PCI endpoint device need MMIO range? Right? Most likely, it has its own internal memory. And that memory has to be mapped into the system address space so that it can be accessed by a driver. Say we have a video card, right? And it has some internal memory here, okay? Let's say this memory size is one megabyte. Now, when you plug this card in into a PCI slot, somehow you have to make this memory visible to the system address space so that the device driver or the op operating system can come and make use of this video buffer, the memory that the video card has brought into the system. What the BIOS does is it's going to discover how much size the video card is requesting and then assign a range out of either the MMIO high or the MMIO low. So let's look at the process. If you look at the config space of the endpoint device, which is type 0 header we saw earlier, you see a bunch of registers here, right? The base address registers or bar registers. Okay. And the format of the bar registers is shown below here. Bit 0 will tell you whether it is going to be a memory space or a IO space or legacy IO space. In our case, this card is bringing in memory. Right, so this will be indicating a memory address space, and this next two bits here is going to specify whether it is a 32-bit decoder or a 64-bit decoder. Okay, when we say 32-bit decoder, it means that this device is capable of only decoding up to 32 bits, which means the BIOS has to allocate space from below 4 gig. Right, 2 per 32 is 4 gig. So it has to allocate space for this device from MMIO low. Okay. Now, if this is saying that it is capable of decoding up to 64 bits, then the BIOS can assign the resource, the address from MMIO high. Okay. Now, let's look at prefetchable a little later. But this is the basic format of the 
base address register. So here you might notice that there are only 32 bits in the base address register, right? So when it claims that it's 64-bit decoder, it needs an additional register, right? Then the next register is ganged together and these two registers will make up a 64-bit bar. So the lower 32 bits will come from here, the next 32 bits will come from here. So how does the BIOS discover what the size of the requested MIO range is by the video card? The way to discover it is to write all ones to the bar register. So you write all ones here, okay, FFs, right? So FFFF. Let's assume a 32-bit bar for simplicity. So you write a value of all ones to the register and then you read the register back. When you read it back, the trailing zeros that you get will indicate what the size of the MMIO range that is being requested is. In our example, we are looking at 1 M MB here, right? So when I write all FFs to the bar register of this device and read it back, I'm going to get 1 MB, which is um, FF, F, F, 0, and all zeros here. If you look at this, this is 20 bits, right? And 2 power 20 is 1 megabyte. So by finding out where the first non-zero value starts, right, the rest basically will tell you what the size of the requested range is. Let's take another example, right, just for making it clear. So let's say we have another device, a second device, some device EX, okay, and it is bringing in, let's say, 4 kilobyte of uh, memory space and it's requesting 4 kilobyte of MMIO range. So when you write all Fs to this device bar register and read it back, you are going to read this one, right? The last 12 bits are zeros, right? And 2 power 12 we know is 4 kilobyte. So by writing all ones and reading it back, that's how the BIOS determines what the size of the requested MMIO range is. And depending on whether it is a 32-bit decoder or a 64-bit decoder, it is going to assign from either MMIO low or MMIO high. So let's say um, 2 GB here is the top of low memory, right? Top of low memory here is 2 GB, okay? We already saw uh, in a previous video that the mm config space right, will take 256 megabytes okay. and there will be some other ranges on top here for other use. We will talk about those things later on. Uh, for example, the BIOS sits here and things like that. So this remaining area here is going to be used for assigning the MMIO ranges. Okay, so this will be uh, 2 gigabyte would be from here, right? This is 2 gigabyte. And if I'm going to use from 2 GB to 2 GB plus 256 megabyte 5 mm config, then the range from here to here, 256 megabyte, will go for mm config. Okay, and so I am taking this point here, right? This is the value I'm showing in here. So now, if I'm going to start assigning MMIO after this, I'm going to start at here, right? Nine, all zeros. Two, let's say in the video card example, it is one megabyte. So from here to the next one megabyte, would be here, right? This will be claimed by the card. So BIOS will write a value of this one back to the bar register, the base address register, and then the card can claim from this base address to whatever it requested, right? One megabyte. So this will be claimed by that card, okay? So now let's say we are going with the four kilobyte example. Then we'll probably start it from 
nine the next address which is nine zero one zero right and go from here to the next four kilobytes which would be this so basically the four kilobyte of address would range from here to here okay now the BIOS will program this value into the bar register for the card which is requesting four kilobytes so the card will start from this address and to its requested range of four kilobytes right, and will claim that range when the transaction hits this range okay so this is how bar ranges are assigned MMIO ranges are assigned to the card that brings in memory also remember MMIO has to be naturally aligned what I mean by this is that the lower bits of the bar register that are returning zeros these bits cannot be written back so when you assign an address and write the address back into the bar register you have to ensure that these bits are always zeros which means the base has to be aligned at a one megabyte address so going back to our example right this card is requesting one megabyte right we assigned it a base address of this one but I cannot go and start at the base address of let's say like this one here right I cannot do it because I can't set this bit okay which means I have to start at an address which is aligned to one megabyte okay in this example down here it's a four kilobyte range request so in this case I can set this bit right this is fine if the base address has to be this that's perfectly fine but I cannot set instead this bit here okay any of these bits here because it's a four kilobyte aligned and these bits has to be zeros so the next step in here would be to see how the root port to which this device is connected knows what the range that is assigned to this device is so if you go back to session 5 and look at how the root ports claim a transaction we call it positive decoding right so let's say for example in a in a root complex right i have multiple root ports in here and we saw that when a transaction comes through the root port will check if that transaction belongs to itself if so it will claim the transaction and pass it down right now how does and if I have a device in here let's say we have the video card down here and it's claiming this address right claiming this address now how does the root port know that this device is claiming this address for that the BIOS has to go and program the root port and the root port has a type 1 header we saw it earlier right so the type 1 header we have the fields here the prefetchable memory base and the prefetchable memory limit okay so it basically there is a base register and a limit register so bias is going to go and program the base address with the value that's in here okay and is going to program the limit register with the value that is in here so now if any transaction from the core comes through right to here then the each root port will look at the incoming transactions address and match with this range we call it an aperture and if it matches the aperture it will claim positive decoding as we saw earlier in session 5 and it will pass it down to the device okay now the tricky part is what if there are multiple devices begin a root port okay so let's say begin a root port I have multiple devices in here okay so say one device is claiming one megabyte another is claiming four kilobyte another is claiming two megabyte okay now the BIOS has to go and assign the addresses for all these cards as consecutive as possible given the alignment restrictions okay and then program the entire range 
of how much ever we assigned into the root ports aperture into the root ports base and limit registers okay so the base and limit registers should encompass the entire mmio range that is claimed by all the devices behind a given root port okay so this is pretty much how the mmio is assigned we talked about mmio low as a simpler example but the same thing applies to mmio high also if the device can decode 64 bits then the bias can assign from top of uh, high memory which is mmio high mmio low as you can see is very um, tight you might want to assign as much as possible from mmio high and only those devices which cannot decode to 64 bits bias will be forced to assign from mmio low okay so thanks for watching and see you in the next video